hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with uh, process control and uh, instrumentation so in the previous videos we uh, discussed some basic introductory concepts related to process control and also we discussed some basic examples you know simple examples related to how process control loop is used for various processes be it uh, in industry or uh, for uh, biomedical applications or in simple home applications S to get the desired output or to get the output close to the desired value we may will never get the desired output exactly we will get a value close to it so to minimize the gap between the actual and the desired that is the job of process control okay so as i said the process control and instrumentation it is a combination of four different fields which are related to each other sensors and transducers measurement and instrumentation machines and control system grouping of this forms the process control now this is the basic block diagram of uh, a process sorry so a process is a continuous series of uh, actions and operations which give us an end result okay number of operations happening either simultaneously or one after the another which produces some end result that we want so the various variables involved in it are the input variables which are divided into two categories manipulated variable and disturbance manipulated variable directly controls the output which we want which is the controlled variable disturbances they are unwanted unnecessary inputs which can cause a fluctuation or deviation in the desired output which we don't want so there is a mechanism to counter that as well and in the output which we have two types controlled variable which is the variable which we want to control which we want to be in a certain range and the unmeasured output which can which we can uh, see as a by product of the process involved okay so uh, what type of control mechanism can be used or should be used there are various uh, basic control mechanisms which we can broadly classify them into these categories okay so they are the open loop system and the closed loop system servo control and regulatory control feedback control and feed forward control so the basic types there are others also which we are not going to discuss right now because it will create confusion so first we'll discuss the simple control mechanisms so what control or which control mechanism has to be used in uh, for what application for what process that depends on the nature of the manipulated variable nature of disturbances nature of control variable and in some cases the nature of the unmeasured outputs the by products also but mainly manipulated variable disturbance and control variable these three uh, variables are come into play these three parameters come into play and it is not that a process will have only one manipulated variable there are many manipulated variables also involved in certain processes it is not that only one disturbance will affect the process there are many disturbances that might affect the process and it is not that a process will have only one controlled variable we a process might have multiple controlled variables that we want to have in a desired range so also in a single process multiple control mechanisms can also be used so it is very essential to understand the characteristics features of each control mechanism so first one is open loop and closed loop system okay we'll discuss about each of them in a different video in detail but first let us just discuss them in general in short so open loop and closed loop system 
So first let us discuss the open loop system. An open loop system does not have a feedback path or a feedback element. It means that uh, the controller action is not dependent on the value of the output. What is the output of the process? The controller has no role to play in regulating the input with respect to the output. It does not measure the output because you see there is no sensor here which measures the output like, like that it happens here. See, there is no, there is a feedback path here. It is a type of feedback control mechanism. It is not exactly feedback control uh, closed loop system. It's a closed loop system, but it is much more complicated than that. But here you see the output is being measured by the sensor given to the controller, which controls the actuator to control the manipulated variable. I have already discussed about these things in the previous video. You can check out there. So here there is no such feedback path simple controller which is connected to the process input is given to get the certain output but in a closed loop system we have a feedback path where the output gets monitored by a sensor or transducer the value is given through a feedback path which can be any circuit element electrical or electronic circuit element which is given to the input it is compared with the help of a summer block and is then fed to the controller Okay, so there are many uh, other features of open loop and closed loop systems. Open loop systems are simple to design. They are less complicated, installation process is easy and also less maintenance is required. Whereas closed loop system because of increase in the number of circuit elements feedback, it is not just one feedback block. It has many complicated circuitry involved with it. So you can see that just a feedback block getting inserted into the system increases the circuit components by a huge number so that's why cost gets in increased maintenance becomes a little bit difficult installation process is difficult so these are some of the features but accuracy from the point of view of accuracy closed loop systems are more accurate as compared to open loop systems okay next is servo control and regulatory control so regulatory control is uh, basically used for elimination of the disturbance not exactly eliminating but minimizing the effect of the disturbance variables see these disturbances that affect the process the unwanted inputs to minimize them the, uh, the regulatory control is used so that the controlled output variable is least affected by those disturbing, disturbing parameters and uh, for regulatory control the set points are generally fixed and fixed means it remains fixed for a long period of time okay and there comes the basic difference between regulatory and servo control in servo control the set point it changes continuously okay it is it does not remain fixed for a, a long period of time it continuously changes and as the set point changes the this this error between or the difference between the actual output and the set point value also changes continuously controller action also changes continuously and the manipulated variable gets adjusted continuously with the help of the actuator whatever actuator is used so here the set point changes continuously in case of servo control so the output the controlled variable has to follow a particular path a trajectory which is defined by the changes in the set point as per the operational requirement so the basic difference between servo and regulatory control for now in simple way Regulatory control has normally fixed set points which remain constant for a long period of time but for servo control the set point changes continuously. Next is feedback control and feed forward control. So this uh, process uh, which is normally used for representation of a process control loop anywhere in any textbook or anywhere you will find this diagram 
which uh, represents a process control loop that is a classic example of a feedback control okay so where we have a sensor controller actuator which is involved with the process so the sensor measures the actual output gives the signal to the controller controller compares it with uh, the set point produces the error signal gives it to the controller and the controller makes certain changes to the manipulated variable the input variable with the help of the actuator to control the output variable and bring it within the desired range so that is that is a classic example of a feedback control now here there is no uh, you know uh, nothing done from the point of view of this disturbance variables you know there is nothing done about the disturbance variables in feedback control only the manipulated variable and the controlled variable these two things are involved nothing about disturbance variables but in feed forward control the main role is played by the disturbance variables so here the disturbance variables are measured with the help of a sensor or transducer then it is uh, given to the controller where it is compared with uh, the uh, so here the disturbance variables are measured with the help of a sensor or transducer given to the controller which compares it with uh, the set point values assigned to it with the help of a summer block and on the basis of the disturbance variables the manipulated variables are altered with the help of actuator so the basic difference between feedback and feed forward is in feedback control the manipulated variable or the input variables are changed with respect to the output variable the controlled variable but in feed forward control the manipulated variable or the input variable is changed with respect to the disturbance variables don't get confused by manipulated and controlled manipulated variable is same as input controlled variable is same as output so feedback output variable controls the manipulated variable feed forward disturbance variable controls the manipulated variable so this is the basic and simple explanation of the different types of simple control mechanisms used in process control instrumentation so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much